Okay, so um, making Python computations fast. Um, as you know, these presentation slots are very short, about, uh, what, 25 minutes? Yeah, so um, we'll, no beginning, no end. We'll just have a middle, and I'll stop. So um, what's the value of pi? 3.14596. No, 3.14159269. Did you know that there was a game that people play at conferences where you say 200 and someone gives you the 200th digit of pi? 476. And I don't know why they bother because we know exactly what the value of pi is. Yeah? Have you noticed that these animals know exactly what pi is? That's irrational. Okay, so some maths. Um, this is a way of getting pi exactly, but I, we just the universe is not big enough to be able to do this computation uh, numerically. So we're going to have to make some sort of approximation. So we're going to work down here, which gives us an approximate value of pi numerically, hence the 3.1415926 dot, 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 dot. Now, as many of us know, the concept is basically you're finding areas under conic sections. So that's the problem we're dealing with here. Just to have something that's small, we can put the code on one page effectively, and it's a data parallel, embarrassingly parallel problem, so we should get scaling with the number of processors. So how are we going to get parallelism out of this thing? Um, well, it's all about the commutativity and associativity, um, we can bracket this in many, many different ways, and we should get the same result out of it. Anybody who's done their numerical analysis for five years will appreciate that this is just a wrong statement. However you do this numerically, you get a different answer. But let's assume that it's all nicely mathematical and we're going to get the right answer, because it's only a little demo. So we could put this on processor one, this on processor two, this on processor three, and then we can merge these together, perhaps on processor four, to get the result. So we get the partial sums on one processor, one processor, one pro blah, 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 blah. I think you get the sort of idea that's going on here. Um, and yeah, people call it scatter gather, fault join, whatever. They, they're actually very, very different things. If you go into the detail of it, scatter gather is a different form of parallelism to fault join, is a different form of parallelism to map reduce. And anybody in parallelism knows that reduce is actually the most important operation that there is, which is why Python reduced reduce from a member of the language to something in a uh, library somewhere. Unlike map and filter, big error, but never mind. So what we want here is some code. And, of course, you want the sequential code first. Oh, do people remember this? The bag? Proper bag. Ah, so I just... Never mind. Um, no, press the wrong button. Should have pressed this button to come down here. So we've got um, some examples of code, which will... Uh, sorry, uh, range multiply. So we have a look at code looking a bit like this. How's the font doing? That's good. Cool. So um, basically it's a for loop. That's what it comes down to. Um, and in here we've got sort of nice things going on. This is exactly the expression that we've been seeing in the uh, summation, which is an approximation to the integral. Um, usual tricks with time and stuff like that. Let's take that for granted. Um, if we were doing the 14-hour version of this, we'd actually talk about that very carefully, but we're not. What happens when we run that? So it takes about 2.6 seconds. Ooh, it says four processors. So this thing is supposed to have four processors. Guess what? It's a mobile i7. Mobile i7s don't have four processors. They have two. And hyperthreading. Waste of time. So this is basically a two-core machine, no matter what that number says. If we get time, we could do things down here. Oh, great, the connection held. 
Um, so we could, we could run uh, sequential stuff on here. Uh, range, uh, multiply, same piece of code. <clears throat> 7.3. Well, why is it so slow? Well, it's 2006 machine, but it's a dual Xeon, so it's got eight real cores. None of these hyperthread stuff. So if we need to have a look at scaling and how fast things can go in Python, we want to be really green about it. And there's a long joke in there that would, I could tell with the one-hour version of the talk. So the usual method of trying to speed things up is use threads. And if you're doing things with C++, with Java, with name your language other than Python, then, then threads are great because they map down to kernel threads, which map down to cores, etc., etc. And as we know, when we do this sort of thing with um, Python, we get things looking like, which ones do we want? Uh, global queue on the grounds that's properly um, thread safe. Okay, so as we know, GIL is our enemy. It gets rid of all parallelism from anything to do with Python. So if I actually have a quick look at that code, we've got the function that calculates the partial sums, you know, the A plus B, the B plus C, D plus E, and then you put them on the queue. Good, nice data flow way of doing things. No shared memory. And the executing is basically just creating a whole load of threads and running them and doing it first one, then the other, blah, 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 blah. Uh, rant, 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 rant is what I should have been saying, but never mind. So the usual argument to, to deal with that problem is to use multiprocess instead of threads. Yeah? Cool. So... Um, we can use multiprocess instead of threads. So that's down here. Multiprocess, using the pool version and asynchronous functions, because that's the right way of doing it. And you get the one point, yeah, so we get a nice one, two, two, two. So we appear to be getting some nice parallelism going on there. Things are going faster. Well, are they? Uh, well, let's go down here and do it because this is where multi whoops, multiprocessing pool.py takes a bit longer. I did say it's a slow processor, but do we get the 1288 because we're doing it with one thread, oh, sorry, one process, two processes, eight processes, 32 processes on an eight-core machine with eight real processors, and so therefore we should get a one, two, eight, eight behavior. So one, roughly two, roughly eight, roughly eight. Yeah, this is one data point. If we were doing this properly as benchmarking, we'd have sort of two or 300 runs of this, do all the ANOVA, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Do you remember the numerical analysis bit? This particular way of doing it is ill-conditioned. So the more additions you get in there, the worse the result gets. But that's because I've got a version of this whole thing to teach to numerical analysis people to get them to do it right. And there's a simple amendment to that code that actually makes it a bit more well-conditioned. Yeah, okay, so uh, sequential, we did that. Threads, waste of time. This is CPU intensive. Processes, do the job, yes, but you've probably spotted the comment um, in there which said, whoops, where, where's it gone? Come on, go, go up. Uh, um, 
100 times fewer than C due to speed issues. So Python is a fundamentally rubbish language for doing computations, CPU-bound computations. Maybe good for I.O., where the computer's doing nothing, it's just waiting for the universe to happen. But if you're doing computations, you are 100 times slower than C or C++ or whatever. So I think the, the upshot of, of that really is it's just way too slow. Eh, not a problem there. And so what's the usual response to that? Um, we could use either Cython or Number. So we can create an extension or library module, and, and we'll get some native code in there. So let's do exactly that. Uh, if we have a look at um, process all, um, we've got a few of them. Extension, you want the Cython one, PYX. Mm -hmm. I have had no E. So basically it looks like Python, tastes like Python, isn't because we've got the annotations. Yes, we've got the sequential and parallel. I'll show this one again for the parallel in a moment. Let's just have a look at the sequential speed for the moment. And what we've got here is a bit of code that is basically code generating C. That's what it's there for. Does it do the job? Well, of course it does the job. So if we uh, pi sequential of extension Cython pi. So it's taking 1.58. What did the previous uh, sequential Python took about 1.3? Yeah, but this is doing 100 times more iterations. So it's sort of 100 times faster than pure Python. So yeah, yeah, Cython, yeah, good. Um, what about the number? Well, we have to go to this one because Debian, in its infinite wisdom, doesn't package number. So we've got to get it from PyPI. I still notice some people calling it PyPy. You were told in 2010 it's not. It's PyPI. Not by me, I hasten to add, but uh, by Guido. Um, so let's try this one. We are in the same place. We're just running number. So Py sequential extension with number. I've got to choose either a four or a reduce. I suppose we'd better do four on the grounds that some people think four loops are a good idea. And so you get 1.6. So number, what's the difference, of course, is that it really is just plain Python. We haven't got to do any annotations other than at JIT. Um, don't know about you, but I like this. It's kind of nice. Um, take the Python, don't bother annotating it, other than stick a decorator on it. Cool. cool. But that's just the sequential speed. We've got the sequential speed up to effectively native code speed because the for loop is now in native code. So if it wasn't running at the same speed as native code, we'd be very worried. Well, you might not be, but I would be. But what about doing this in parallel? So if I've got a Pi parallel version in here, extension, number, oh, I haven't done that one yet. Curses. How about Cython? Mm-hmm. Um, excuse me? Same number of noughts, 10 to the 9. Uh, we better look at the process all si extension Cython, PYX. Okay, so P range, no gill. <laughs> Not having that, waste of... Well, on this processor, it's a waste of time. 
what happens if we do it down here? So um, we want the, oh, we didn't do the, pi, pi, third, pi, ooh, sorry, pi sequential extension siphon. It does take a bit longer on here, of course, because it's a slow machine. Same code, different behaviours. I, I suspect hyperthreads. I suspect there is something going fantastically wrong on the latest i7s compared to ancient Xeons, which don't have hyperthreads. But that's only a suspicion. Remember the 1288? That's supposed to be one eighth of that. Hmm. We seem to have got about four, about. Again, it's not a statistically significant number, but it indicates that Scython really doesn't appear to be up to the job. On an eight-core machine, it's not eight times faster, and on a, um, on a machine up here, it was suspiciously slower. Well, can we trust Scython? Don't know. Can't do the experiment with numbers, sorry about that. So what we should do is, would you use NumPy? Probably. Would you use C? No, nobody in their right minds uses C anymore. And then we'll have a look at C++ D, and then I'll just finish with a few comments on Chapel. Um, I'll put these slides up, so you don't need to panic about taking photographs of this and stuff. So all the uh, URLs there will be available after the talk. If anybody wants any of these codes, the URL of the Git repository is there, which has all of these codes. No hate mail, but if you've got some constructive comments and stuff like that, please feel free to send them in. So what about NumPy? Um, so if we go here, um, pi... Sequential, no, it's not sequential, it's just numpy. Now, shall we use the from function or the from pi func? Let's do both, but yes, from pi func dot multiply. So, what was the sequential speed just to compare it to? Uh, we want the extension, uh, Scython one. Okay, so NumPy, which is supposed to paralyze for you on a two-core machine, takes twice as long as a sequential code on the same machine. Uh -huh. That's just making it worse. Yeah. So, is NumPy the saviour for computationally intensive code? Uh, no. <coughs> oh well, I could go on more, there is more evidence, but we've only got like eight minutes left. So, what about the C++ stuff? Well, you can do C++ if you really want to. Uh, so we could do process all, ex uh, library, C++, and you can write code that looks like that, which I think it looks ugly. Uh, in C++17, there will be a new range type, so we can get rid of code looking like this and do it much more neatly. Would it go fast? Yeah, but what about if we do it in D? Okay. So there we are, we reduce things. Remember, reduction is the single most important operation in parallel computing, which is why it got removed from the Python language. And you write this sort of code, very declarative, and you build libraries for it, and then you run stuff. 
Let me just make sure that uh, it's all made up. Uh, where it is, there it is, processalllibrary.so. That's the one that we just had a quick look at. Uh, so if I, uh, I forgot to set this whilst I was setting up, so I need to set that. And then we want, which one do I want? Pi, parallel, extension D. What? What? I've done the load library path. Ah, wrong word. Not extension. Library. Segfo. <laughs> It was very quick. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, where, where are the uh, demo gods when you want to slaughter them? That worked 20 minutes ago. <laughs> this is unfair. Um, let's try it on here just for the heck of it. It'll probably say the same thing. Um, pi parallel library D. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it must be. It must be. Hmm. I can assure you that does work, except under the pressure of trying to keep 50 or 60 people entertained. Now, as I given the time, I'm going to have to cut this short a little bit and not solve that problem because I want to just talk a little bit about uh, Chapel, not because I can do the full-on demo mixing Chapel and Python because the one thing that you can do is, as well as building libraries, you can create extensions with Boost and you can create extensions with PyD. So I showed library, it didn't work, we could have done an extension. Um, there is also a thing called PyChapel. Um, you're asking, well, what is Chapel? It's a relatively new programming language. It's there to be a parallel programming language. That's its job. And why is that important? Um, it's because of the non-uniform memory architectures that every computer has these days. Different levels of memory, of speed of access to the uh, processor. And unless you're doing what is a partitioned global address space programming language, you have no control over it. You can use MPI, you can use all these other flash ways of extending stuff around, but you've got multiple different programs talking to each other. The PGAS languages give you the way of describing your entire computation in one program. And so you've got different levels of communication that you can control in your programming language. Um, there are other languages, X10, there used to be Fortress, but that's died a death now. Personally, I find Chapel the nicest of these, but I'm sure there are many people who do X10 proponents. So what happens if I go and have a look at a Chapel program? So if we have a look at the Pi sequential, damn, I didn't compile these. Um, so if you do four with multiply, you get code looking suspiciously like that. Um, a little bit of Fortran heritage in there, hence the param, because it's trying to replace Fortran after all. That's what it's trying to do. But I don't think anybody would too, be too hurt about writing that sort of code. Lots of uh, type inference, not much in the way of having to worry about types. So... You know, <coughs> The nice thing about Python really is the lack of types, but it's also a bit of its downfall. What happens if we have to run that? Well, I'd actually have to compile it. Can I afford the time to compile stuff? Uh, not like that. Yeah, when SCOMS works under Python 3, that'll be a good day. Um, forget that for the moment. Um, what about uh, Py uh, Parallel? 
we can get a uh, reduce, that's the really one we want, not batched. Okay, so you get code looking like that. If you take it, compile it, run it, you'll find it runs almost as fast as full on C++ with TBB. And if you're doing parallel computation, it's either Fortran or C++ with TBB, threaded building blocks. They're considered the fastest at the moment. And this stuff runs about half a percent slower, which for me is not a problem. So I am going to have to wind up now. That's because I'm a winder, but never mind. Um, the issue here, I would say, is that the attempt to use Python for everything is actually misguided. That CPU-bound computations are actually much better described by native code languages rather than trying to convert Python code into a native code language. Number, Cython, do a brave job. But I think at the end of the day, really what we've got to do is to get into polyglot programming for all of this. Python for the coordination, access to matplotlib, all those sort of great things about the Python milieu. But we leave the computation to the languages that support computation. And I think in the future, Chapel is going to be an important language. And so making Python computations fast for me is about not using Python for the computation, but for, but for using Python for everything else and Chapel or something like that for the rest of the computation. And with that, thank you very much. <laughs>